Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters, in various places the scripture impels us to acknowledge and confess our many sins and wickedness, and that we should not disguise nor hide them from the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, with the result that we may obtain forgiveness of them by His infinite goodness and mercy. And although at all times we ought to humbly acknowledge our sins before God, yet we ought especially to do so when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at His hands, to express His most worthy praise, to hear His most holy word, and to ask those things which are indispensable and necessary for the body as well as the soul. For this reason, I urge and entreat you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice to the throne of the heavenly grace, saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the plans and desires of our own hearts. We committed offense against your holy laws. We have left undone those things that we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us, but you, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent, according to your promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that from, that from here onward, onward we may live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Merciful Lord, we entreat you to grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall show forth your praise. O God, be hasty to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our King and Saviour draws near. O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In His hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are His also. The sea is His, for He made it, and His hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. 
for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day at Massa in the wilderness. When your fathers put me to the test and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. For forty years I loathed that generation and said, They are a people who go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. Therefore I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, Behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have me in behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in show, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. For you form my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, in your book were written every one of them. The days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake, and I am still with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God! O man of blood, depart from me! They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not love those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. 
I count them my enemies. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson reading, according to Prophet Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 20. The vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Children have I read and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its master's creep. But Israel does not know, my people do not understand. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, children who deal corruptly, they have forsaken the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They are utterly estranged. Why will you still be struck down? Why will you continue to rebel? The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it but bruises and sores and raw wounds. They are not pressed out or bound up or softened with oil. Your country lies desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. In your pre very presence, foreigners devour your land. It is desolate, as overthrown by foreigners. And the daughter of Zion is left, like a booth in a vineyard, like a lodge in a cucumber field, like a besieged city. If the Lord of hosts had not left us a few survivors, we should have been like Sodom and become like Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed beasts, I do not delight in the blood of bulls, or of lambs, or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required of you this trampling of my courts, bring no more vain offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and the calling of convocations. I cannot endure iniquity and solemn assembly. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, plead the widow's cause. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they had red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be eaten by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. We praise you, O God, 
we acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth worships you, the Father everlasting. To you all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The Holy Church throughout all the world acknowledges you. The Father of an infinite majesty, your adorable true and only Son. Also the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you did humble yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you did open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you shall come to be our judge. We therefore pray to you, help your servants, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you and we worship your name, have a world without end. Guarantee, O oh Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O oh Lord, let your mercy be upon us, as our trust is in you. O Lord, in you have I trusted, let me never be confounded. The second lesson reading, according to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, verse 1 to 21. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except 
he who had descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us, that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people, in the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in, in one, one God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of, of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of what substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven And was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary And was made man And was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate He suffered and was buried And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sits on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the day and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Spirit, let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who is in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save us. And mercifully hear us when we call upon you. And do your ministers with righteousness. And make your chosen people joyful. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time. Because there is no one else who fights for us, but only you, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, Give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and ever. Amen. O oh God, you are the author of peace and love of concord, and in knowledge of you stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, confidently trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us today with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our activities, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to your merciful care, that being guided by your providence, we may dwell secure in your peace. Grant to the Prime Minister and to all in authority wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve these people in your fear. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every good and perfect gift. Send down upon our bishops, ministers, and other clergies, and upon the congregations committed to their charge, 
the helpful spirit of your grace, and that it may truly please you, pour upon them the continual dew of your blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the Creator and Preserver of all mankind, we humbly pray to you for all sorts and conditions of men, that you would be pleased to make your ways known unto them, your saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for your Holy Church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by your good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to your fatherly goodness all those who are anyways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or life situation, that it may please you to comfort and relieve them according to their many needs, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy result out of all their afflictions. And these we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, do give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we humbly pray to you, give us that due sense of all your mercies, that our hearts may be sincerely thankful, and that we show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto you, and promises that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.